You see this over and over in the Bible. And Hannah eagerly is wanting something which can seemingly be of the natural, right? She's like, I want a kid. I want a child. And yeah, there's a natural element to that, but there's an eternal element to that too. And so the Lord hears her prayer. And even as a a minister initially judges her by her prayer, she's speaking with her lips, but no words are coming out. And she was perceived to be drunk by the person who was watching her in the, um, in the church. And she's like, no, 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 I haven't drank anything. I haven't drank anything. I'm just so discouraged and I'm pouring out my heart to the Lord. Please don't think of me as a wicked woman for I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. Again, it goes back to like, you can grieve and bring that to God first and know that he is answering you in his time in his will. And from that place, Eli said, in that case, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant the request you have asked him. Now she's having a conversation with the person, the priest who eventually is going to take care of her child. And she doesn't see how God is working. She doesn't see that in that moment, God was granting Eli compassion towards the mother who was in anguish that he would one day care for her son. I mean, look at the placements. Have you ever had um, like deja vu or a meet cute or a like, I've seen you before, or I cannot believe. Yesterday I was on a call with someone about a media um, opportunity in New York City and she was having this whole conversation with me, super lighthearted. And she's working for this woman who's been on the red carpet, who has a talk show, all these different things. And she said, I find out after a year of working with her that she actually went to high school with my mom. And I'm like, that's crazy. And she's like formulating her faith, right? She's like, I used to love Jesus. I love how you have your faith in everything that you do. Wasn't even what we were talking about. I just had an opportunity to minister to her in that moment. God's going to give you these moments. And if we don't take the time and intentionality of love, this is today's message, that's it. That's it, better use your time, better use your love. But listen, love only comes from a place of overflow. If you're constantly people pleasing, if you're constantly in the state of like, well, if I do this, then I'll give this. If you're in this give and take cycle, this vortex, and then you get offended when someone doesn't give back to you, right? There's no love in that. Love is a free gift. God freely gave his son for you, sacrificed on the cross. Hannah does the same thing. It's a pre-telling. It's a pre-telling of the New Testament. Over and over again, this happens. So after Hannah gets what the Lord wanted to give her all along, but she said, I'm going to give this baby back to you, which I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine having nursed my kiddo and then literally dropping them off to a stranger that I had to trust who was going to raise my child well because I consecrated him to the Lord. Now, she clearly has devout faith in a way that I have not yet learned because she trusts God so much. Now, had I been craving a child for that long, we didn't really have um, uh, pregnancy issues. And um, I know a lot of people who have and kills my heart. I just found out uh, friends of mine who actually lost a baby several years ago and I had no idea. And I thought about the silent grieving and she told me about what transpired in her heart and her life for years. All the tension and the friction and the even anger towards God, right? So I I just love Hannah's love for the Lord and her faith in him and the ability that she can see something greater because he's blessed her with a miracle she never imagined. And I've surely been blessed and highly favored in many ways. And this challenges my faith. Mother Teresa, while I was reading that book, Ignite by her, well, it's not by her, but her, uh, Audible clippings are in it. It was written by two others. I'll have to give you guys the actual hunger or thirst for God is what it's called. Thirst for God. And Mother Teresa's on the cover. So good. 
and it challenged me. It challenged me to think bigger and I'm a visionary and I know you guys are too. We think huge and sometimes that's what causes paralysis analysis because we don't know what's the next step. I can only imagine Hannah's like, okay, well now I'm giving you my only child, the one I prayed for desperately and imagine the feeling of loss that I would have felt if I handed that baby over and I'm going back to the same place that I grieved for years without a child. Back into the place where she was getting ridiculed by the other woman who had all the kids. And this is the part. I love how gracious God is. He's so good. He knew her heart. She said each year, oh, this is so sweet. So each year she would go back to see her son when it was that time of offering for the Lord and she would make him a small coat. And when she came with her husband for sacrifice and before they returned home, Eli would bless her and her husband, Elkanah. And he said, may the Lord give you other children to take place of the one she has given to the Lord. And the Lord blessed Hannah and she conceived and gave birth to three more sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. And so that's just a mother's journey, a mother's tale. There's surely times where now as I'm processing, God might never ask me to go hand my son to another family or to a church, but he might in fact ask me to hand my son to another family or another church. It might not be now, when he was probably two or three like Hannah had to, but eventually there's the leave and cleave concept in the Bible. And I have to be willing to let God handle his battles. I see him now, he's this little warrior. He just got three submissions this weekend in gold in his gi bracket in the international Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament in Atlanta. He's like killing it y'all. He's killing it, it's so cool. But what I love most about the entire process is not him winning or learning, winning or learning. You guys got to get this in your rhythm, especially as a mama. There's no losing, only learning. Winning and learning is his consecrating every match to God. We pray before he goes out. He points to God the moment he finishes. He's like, woo! And like, that is the coolest thing because it's not just like a fame, like natural tendency. It's like a God did this for me. I got to be used by God. And that's how Mother Teresa's heart is. That's what Hannah is doing. That's what we as mothers and fathers are going to have to do. We're going to have to hand our children over. But out of our devout faith, we can trust God because he's done miracles in our own life. And in times that I was in a place of darkness or prodigal, he waited. He was present. He was intentional with every person, place, and thing that was put into my space to breathe, to breathe. It didn't mean that he gave me a drink of water when I was dehydrated. He was the living water, but it wasn't tangible. There were so many places in my area of despair when I was prodigal that I was so thirsty. And it wasn't until I was hydrated by God that that was an eternal uh, just experience and answer.